So let's discuss about the main free part of a gas molecule. For that, let us consider a gas molecule which is in the form of a sphere of diameter d. Let d be the diameter of the sphere so that its radius will be d by 2. Clear. d by 2 is the radius of the sphere. Suppose this particle is moving with a velocity b in the horizontal direction. So this molecule will cover a space between these two lines. Let us represent these two lines from two diametrically opposite points from the sphere and this molecule will cover a space in between these two lines. Now if you consider three other molecules like this, let's say there is a molecule or a similar molecule which means the diameter or the size of the molecule remains the same. That is one molecule just touches the line and another molecule outside this line and other molecule inside this line. Clearly, this molecule will collide with this molecule and this one. Since this molecule is outside this line, it won't collide. So the minimum condition for the collision is, is this. So just a molecule has to just touch the line in order to at least have the collision with this molecule. So let's take that only. So the distance between the centers of this, you know, this since these molecules are similar, the diameter radius is also d by 2. Radius of this molecule is also d by 2. So that the distance between the centers of these molecules is, is d. Clear. D, d by 2 plus d by 2, d. Now, if you, if you create a cylindrical column just like this, The, there will be a molecule at the bottom also. So if you if you project a cylinder like this, so what is the significance of this cylinder? This cylinder is nothing but any molecule whose center lies inside this cylinder get collided with the with the, our molecule, this molecule moving with velocity v. So, inside the cylinder, we have the collision, okay. So, after, after time delta t, let's take a time delta t, the distance traveled by this molecule will be, let's say distance, distance b will be, you know distance is equal to velocity times delta t. So, this is the distance traveled by the molecule. So the volume of the cylinder, let's say V delta T. So the volume, volume of the cylinder will be volume after time, volume after time delta T is equal to, you know, volume of the cylinder is equal to base area into height. So after time delta T, this molecule will be here. And the volume covered will be, you know, base area into length or base area into height. You know, base area, this, the radius will be d. So, base is equal to circle. So, area of circle equal to pi d square times v delta t, length, v delta t, base area into height. This is, v delta t is the height and this is the area. So, that's the volume. Let's call that as equation number one. Then number of particles, number of particles, you know, number of particles is equal to number of collisions. Clear? If there are five particles, then this will, this particle will get five collisions. Clear? So number of particles is equal to number of collisions, number of collisions. Then how will you find the number of particles within this volume? We, we have to find the number of particles within this volume that is pi v square v delta t that is equal to volume into number density number density n equal to or number of particles number of particles per unit volume 
that's 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 called the number density so volume times number density will give the number of particles and number of particles equal to number of collisions so let's represent that as n you know the volume is equal to pi d square v delta t times n let's call that as equation number one so sorry equation number two and you know the mean free path here we actually take theoretical mean free path okay we will discuss that later so just write theoretical mean free path actually the by the definition of mean free path we have mean free path is equal to distance covered distance covered in time delta t distance covered in time delta t divided by number of collisions number of collisions that's the definition of mean free path so distance covered we know distance covered is equal to v delta t this is the distance covered v delta t divided by number of collisions we found that as pi d square v delta t m clear let's write that here again let's let's write this equation again because we we have to change that later so let's write that as v delta t divided by pi d square v delta t l clear so you can cancel this v and v again this delta t and delta t so the theoretical mean free path is equal to 1 by n pi d square rearranging clear let's call that as equation number 3 so this is the theoretical value of mean free path but in real case let's discuss that in in reality we just consider in theoretical case only this molecule is moving with velocity v and all other molecules are taken at rest that is velocity of the all, all this molecule is taken at taken as zero but in reality this molecule is also moving with some velocity so let's call this as velocity one velocity one and let's take the velocity of the other molecules as v2 now just just erase all this i'm not erasing this one because we have to change this equation anyway let's say that as theoretical and put it in a box okay now this uh, this molecule is moving with the velocity v1 in horizontal direction and this particle is moving with the velocity v2 in some other direction so here the denominator i mean this velocity is not just v it will be the relative velocity between these molecules that's why i have written this in the box in order to understand this v remains the same because it's the velocity of this molecule but this one is the relative velocity between these two molecules so the relative velocity will be this length okay this length or you can write relative velocity v r is equal to you can write that as v r into v r right put a vector side v r dot v r clear see see v r dot v r equal to v r square root of v r square is v r but you know the relative velocity will always be v2 minus v1 clear so this is equal to this length is actually v2 minus v1 resultant is v1 plus v2 but the difference is the relative velocity so this is vr equal to this is equal to vr v2 minus v1 dot v2 minus v1 clear so let's write that here
So V R relative velocity V R is equal to root of this can be written as if you multiply V2 dot V2 V2 dot V2 minus V2 dot V1 V2 dot V1 minus now this V1 you have to multiply with the second term minus V1 dot V2 plus minus of minus plus plus V1 dot V1 clear but you know V2 dot V2 is equal to V2 square minus this is equal to 2 V1 dot V2 plus V1 square clear but this term is actually zero because V1 and V2 are random random vectors so anyway if you take the sum that is that you will get that as zero because they are random and unrelated okay so this can be written as root of v2 square plus v1 square but when the temperature remains the same all the molecules have same velocity so that magnitude of v2 approximately equal to magnitude of v1 let's say that equal to v2 so this can be written as v square plus v square you will get root of 2v square or root 2v. So, there is a slight difference between the theoretical and actual value. So, that this v is actually root 2v. Sorry, this v is equal to root 2v. So, this v by vr, uh, I am writing this again. So, this now that it is not theoretical, it is the real value equal to V delta T divided by pi D square. This will be root 2V. Root 2V delta T and clear. So, theoretical one is you do not have to provide that root 2, but in real case you have to multiply it with 1 by root 2. Now, you can cancel this V and V delta T and delta T. So, the mean free path is equal to 1 by root 2 n pi t square. Clear. So, this is the mean free path. And you can write this as this lambda is equal to 1 by root 2 into 1 by n pi t square. And you know this one is theoretical. So, lambda is equal to 1 by root 2 the theoretical. Clear.